Hey guys, it's Brian here again in another video, and here's another car that people were asking for. I did the Camry LE, but I had a lot of Camry people asking me to talk about the new Camry SE. And today we're in an SE with the black badges. It's the SE all-wheel drive. Let's check it out. Here's a quick peek at what the window sticker looks like for this Camry. We're on Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus. This is what I call a base Camry SE because this Camry does not have any of the five packaged options available, which let me share with you what those are. So the first package available for the Camry SE, which this one does not have, is the convenience package, which would give you a key fob that we call the smart key that you could just leave in your pocket and grab the door handle to unlock. And that convenience package would also give you the auto dimming rear view mirror with home link to three different garages. So if you don't have a Camry SE with the convenience package, you will have a turnkey. But some people in the world of today do prefer a turnkey. That convenience package gets rid of the turnkey and gives you the key fob. Standard on the Camry SE is a seven inch screen. However, the second package available is the audio upgrade package, which would give you the nine inch screen, which would move all of this to the side and give you nine inches diagonal. It would also give you wireless phone charging right over here. So we call that Qi wireless charging. You'd have a wireless charger and also rear vents. So on that audio upgrade package, yes, it's very interesting to hear. Rear vents will be back here for AC in the back available on an audio package. The third package available that this Camry doesn't have is called the weather package, which gives you heated front driver and passenger seats and a heated steering wheel, which there'd be a button right here. On the brochure, you'll see that the weather package also has heated outside mirrors. But from what I can see, it looks like they're actually giving you heated outside mirrors on the base level as well. The fourth available package is the blind spot monitor package, which would give you little orange lights in the corner of the mirrors right over here on the side. And those will light up orange when somebody's riding in your blind spot. And a part of that package also includes the rear cross traffic alert, which will alert you when it senses movement while you're backing up. And the fifth of five packages that this base SE Camry doesn't have, the power tilt and slide moonroof package, which goes into the body of the car. But with all that being said, there's nothing wrong with a base model Camry because this Camry is still upgraded from the LE, which we're gonna go over starting with the exterior. Starting with the front of the car, the first thing you notice about the Camry SE over the Camry LE is the front end. So the face of this Camry has what I call a squint. The front end is squinting towards the center of the car. It's giving it more of like a aggressive arrow look directed towards the center of the car. And the car definitely looks like it's pointing at you. Though we have some fake vents over here, there's lots of airflow in the front with these hexagonal, almost like a honeycomb design on the grill. Whereas with the LE, it would just kind of be like a straight uh, tomato slicer is what I call it. Almost looks like that tool that you use just to cut your, uh, your hard boiled eggs. But with this, you get that nice sporty honeycomb design on the grill. Of course, LED lights are standard on all the Camrys through a projector beam, but on the Camry SE, if we get a little bit closer, we actually see here that some of the interior plastics of that headlight actually are a dark smoked chrome, uh, or black if you wanna just call it black, which goes all the way towards the back, whereas on the base model, this would be all chromed out, giving it a much different look. One thing to note, if you did go with the XSE, Instead of this orange, amber, whatever you call it, uh, side marker slash turn signal, you'd have the triple J's that go like this. That'll be a super bright white. That's also going to be like that on the XLE as well. Most Toyota stores have the option for you to do aftermarket fog light accents on the side. So do discuss with the store you're purchasing from and see what your options are in case you must have fog lights. Putting fog lights on the Camry SE definitely evolved the entire car, but they are not available as a option from the factory. To the side of the car, another feature that stands this out from the base model LE are the wheels. So I nicknamed these the Ninja Stars, and what's very nice about these wheels are you have these silver machine finished Ninja Stars, but if you look even closer, we have gloss black spokes in between. So this wheel is full of spokes, the machining is done very nicely on that wheel with a nice Toyota emblem in the center. Just to give you a closer look at how the machining is done. This wheel plays very nicely with the light. Standard are these 18 inch wheels with some all season tires. And when you combine that with the all wheel drive of the car, you have a car that looks good, but is still very capable. 
Color matching mirrors, of course, are standard with an LED turn signal on the side. Great for safety and visibility on the highway and a chrome accent too to kind of pick up some of the light and add to the styling. When we move down a little bit lower, the side skirts here are accented in black. And the cool part about these are it's not a gloss black, so that's gonna take the beading very nicely. And it's not too much black to take away from the car. The white is shadowed with a black finish there down below. Moving to the back of the car, the taillights and the accent give away that it's an SE as well. So if you were looking at the LE, you wouldn't have these uh, wind diffusers here that are supposed to cut through the air a little bit. Much more of a looks piece, but Toyota says that actually has a slight function to it, which these little things can be seen in a smaller uh, form in different parts of the car. On the taillight here, we have some black in the plastic, just like in the headlights. So we have that black sporty look uniformed all throughout the car. And besides these black badges, which you can get on any vehicle, the bottom of the bumper also gives it away that it's upgraded from a base model LE because we have some ground effects here. We have some lips, diffusers, dual exhaust in the back, and a little bit more of that black here, which is gonna match the ground effects on the side skirts. And just to top it off, if we look up by the trunk, we have this adhesed little lip wing which gives it just that nice little finishing touch to the overall look of the car. So we haven't even really dove in too deep, but overall the exterior appearance of this car is definitely elevated from a base model and gives it a unique personality compared to your regular run of the mill Camry. But let's pop the hood, talk about the drivetrain and the handling of the Camry SE. Under the hood of this Camry, you're greeted with a 2.5 liter four cylinder mated to an eight speed automatic transmission with real gears. This is the A25A FKS. The fuel economy is rated at 34 on the highway. So a couple less than the front wheel drive version, which is rated at 39 and 25 in the city for a blend of 29. Of course, this not being one of your top of the line Camrys, we still have a simple pop rod over here one less thing to break, and some noise reduction material here as well, something that you won't find on a Corolla. But back under the hood, you can see Toyota's traditional simple design. Everything is easy to get to. You can check your oil. Coil packs are easy to get to. I have my alternator nice and high up top. I can see my coolant level just by looking at it. The air intake filter is very easy to get to just by unclipping a couple clips. I can change the filter. When the battery goes, very easy to take in and out. And I can see my brake level just by peering over to the side. Another thing from an ownership perspective, the bulbs are very easy to get to in case you ever have to replace the bulbs on both sides, by the way, not just one side. So if one of those nice LED bulbs ever goes, it's very easy to pop them out and get another pair in. So overall, the Camry is a very simple car, easy to own, easy to maintain, and they come with two years or 25,000 miles of free maintenance from Toyota. They call that Toyota Care. But what about the handling? The SEs are different than the LEs because they come with a firmer suspension. Of course, a little bit of a thinner tire here with the bigger wheels, which is gonna give you a more firm and responsive ride. So for people that hit the back roads or the highway warriors, if style doesn't really matter, but you're a driver type, this is definitely gonna be the reliable car for the daily drive. That doesn't let you down, but it's definitely more fun than the base model. But speaking of daily driving, you're probably wondering, how much space does the trunk of a Camry have these days? Well, let's close the hood, pop the trunk, and check out the other side of this car. Inside the Camry. Tons of storage. Pretty much standard on all the Camrys. We have this all-weather cargo protector here. And instead of going in the back by the headrest to fold down the 60-40 split seats, we have a little pole over here and we can push those seats right down. In this trunk is 15.1 cubic feet of space compared to the 13.1, very competitive on the Corolla, but that much more on the Camry. So if you're buying the car for the size and comfort over the Corolla, you're still getting the benefit of more cargo space. Underneath, we pull this little hook Standard are the tools, jack, and spare tire for the car. Definitely great since this is all-wheel drive. 
Speaking of this being a daily driver and all wheel drive and storing stuff, you're probably gonna be bringing people with you. And that's probably one of the reasons why you consider the Camry over something smaller. So let's close the trunk and hop in the back seats and talk about the space as a rear passenger. Another dead giveaway that we're looking at a Camry SE are these beautiful seats. We have Toyota's black soft tex with a nice felt ribbon here in the center. A very cool design. We have these stripes of leather and, and checkered design here going down the center of the seat. The all weather mats have these leaf designs that look like Camry headlights. Let's start with the door. Not a ton of storage over the Corolla, but one additional spot. So maybe two water bottles or a water bottle and a clutch. Doesn't go down the hall door. Not a super big deal. A soft, rubbery, spongy material for some comfort, but hard plastics all around besides this spongy piece. We have a nice non-shiny kind of matte chrome uh, braking design here that will pair well with the same colored handle. Definitely breaking up all the black and adding some dimensions to the eye. Standard from the factory are these door sill protectors for the little ones when they step on the door sills. But let's jump inside and see what it looks like and feels like. Nice big windows. You're definitely not going to be feeling cramped in a Camry. It's no Avalon or Crown, but it's definitely a big upgrade from the Corolla. Now in the Corolla, I'm I'm five foot ten. This is set for somebody about my height, maybe five foot ten to six foot. In the Corolla with the seat adjusted in my setting, I only got about maybe six inches. I would say here, I got about eight to nine, depending on the way I sit. So there's definitely a lot more leg room, so you can sit taller, bigger people in here. Also from the factory, this one came with the dual port USB, which it has to because the Corolla LE at the base level is already coming with two USB plugs. So we got to we got to offer you stuff. I will say that audio upgrade package with the rear vents definitely would be a plus. You know, if you if you got people back here a lot, so consider that. Pockets on both sides, unlike the Corolla. Very nice to see for additional storage. And overall, I definitely feel roomy. The headroom, there's plenty of headroom. And it's nice that I have this channel over here to add a little bit more head space. But the lighting just shines right in here. Another nice thing, the hooks here for anchoring down your car seats are very easy to get to. They even have this little grippy design here on the inside of the cover. It's a cinch. You can one hand the seat belts and the buckles do not get lost into the cushion like they do on some other cars. You can push as hard as you want and they never get lost in the seat. But that's enough in the back. Let's jump over to the co-pilot side and see what it looks like as a passenger. All right, so we got a couple upgrades from front to back. We now have a little bit of a softer to the touch material here, which is great to see instead of that hard plastic that you see in the back. Same breakup with that uh, brushed look uh, on the chrome, the non-shiny chrome. The soft spongy material here, which will be nice for resting your arm. And very similar storage over here compared to the, uh, the back. So I'd say maybe, you know, one thicker water bottle. You won't be fitting any big Yetis or Stanley cups. You can definitely fit a water bottle and maybe a little wallet over here as well. Manual seat for the passenger with a height adjuster. So you got a pump down lever, pump up lever, recline, and the traditional slider. But that nice design here with some silver stitching and that felt stripe. Great touch compared to a base Camry. Let's jump in real quick.
plenty of visibility, huge windows, and I like that you can see through the mirror and the door there and the A-pillar. The mirror used to be in the corner on the Camrys for 2017. They moved it down in 2018 on all the TNGA framed Camrys. Very driver-oriented dashboard. And speaking of that, let's go to the most important seat, the driver's seat. And here's what it looks like getting into a brand new 2023 Toyota Camry SE all-wheel drive. Start it up with that turnkey. That's a cool little startup. I'm going to turn the AC up a little bit. Of course, the dual zone climate control is standard. I'm a little hot right now. You do got to kind of have to reach for that door. The door swings out very far, which is nice, but the handle's a little further out instead of over here. I suspect they did this just because this doesn't have enough leverage for a longer door. But if it's out all the way, you're definitely going to be leaning to reach. So pro tip, maybe open it about halfway. If you're not a very large person, you can get in very easily on the second click setting and you can grab a lot easier, but very small detail that I figured I would mention. Of course, the driver's seat is electronic all the way with a lumbar support, auto up and down windows all around, standard on pretty much every Toyota now because we're going fully TNGA, which are the new frames. Full button controls for the screen over here, full button controls for the uh, cruise control, no hidden buttons in the back, nicely wrapped leather steering wheel with some big thick stitching here, one of my favorite parts of Toyota's. This is actually hand done, it's the last thing they do on the cars before they send them out for testing and then go to the store. Love me some leather wrap steering wheel. Here's our driver oriented dashboard. Everything's kind of aiming towards the driver and the control panel over here. I like the soft touch here and as well as a soft touch on the dash. So we have soft touch, soft touch, and soft touch all around in the front, which not only feels nice, but it does change the acoustics of the car. And it just gives it a look and feel of, of more quality because it is more quality. And what I forgot to mention was instead of a wood grain design, we have this nice almost like a basket weave, sporty. I'm not gonna say carbon fiber, but it's just a, you know, it's a sporty design here we got on the top of the dash here, swooping down towards the shifter for a more driver-oriented Camry. Very simple, easy reader here with big white letters, big white needles, very, very quickly visible with a easy to read MID here in the center. I have some different menus on the left that I can bounce through and see different information all about the car. So do check out the tutorial video on the Camry to see that. Couple different drive modes here right by the shifter and an automatically applying parking brake that disengages when you take it out of park and re-engages when you put it back into a uh, park like that. Backup camera, it's good. It's not insanely HD quality, but it definitely works great. And on the screen here, you don't have wireless CarPlay. You do have to plug into the USB plug right down below. I suspect soon the Camry will be getting the new software system, but this has the previous tried and true that we already know all about software system. And it's very easy to use. It's very intuitive. You can change the color theme. You can turn the screen off. I have a lot of customizations here in the in the setup menu. I can make it look a lot sportier very quickly. Very simple stuff, but all you gotta do is plug it right into the USB plug and you'll have the CarPlayer Android Auto and you can use whatever navigation app you wanna use right on the screen. On the armrest here for driver and passenger, it's definitely nice and wide and it's nice and long. It's very big, it's very easy to share with people. They were keeping in mind those long drives. There's a button right in the center that I push and this comes up like so. And I'm greeted with two more USBs, an old school one and a new school one. Simple to get to. No 12 volt plug over here for the old schoolies. 
if you like the 12 volt plug you go right over there and right by the shifter if i push this i have additional storage here and if i do that i have a non-stick surface over here for preventing things from sliding around as well as that usb that i mentioned for the carplay system the shifter is also pleasant to use as well i have a nice tightly knit leather material over here with a hard plastic and a little toyota stripe that you see on a lot of toyota interiors i grip it like this push the button in with the brake down a drive there's no little b over here for braking like on the corolla so it's just park drive simple if i go over to the s mode i can go forward in the gears or back in the gears and remember you'll see that right down here on the bottom of the screen i have eight real gears to toggle through and control those rpms up top another nice thing to see are those bright white leds for the map lights i don't have an overhead dome light but i do have one in the back Kind of funny that they gave us the incandescent yellow uh, candle light, but in the front we have the LEDs. Toyota, if you ever seen in my videos, just make these match. People would be a little happier with that. I think that's kind of funny, but it's a unique quirk of Toyota's. And the standard safety connect, which on this car I believe is a one-year trial. And then there's a fee for that monthly or yearly. And a huge-sized sunglass or driving glasses case with a soft backing to prevent your lenses from scratching. But remember, this is a base SE, which means it's not loaded with some of the packages available. So, you know, depending on what's available at the store near you, you can get one with the weather package. You can do the um, audio upgrade package with the bigger screen in the vent. You can even do the convenience with the, the mirror and the push button starter. There's different ways to get this Camry. Now this one is sold like most of our cars that are on ground. A lot of cars are selling before they're even built. I can't take this down the road, but I'll do a quick little drive in the parking lot just so you can kind of get a simulation of what it's like. The steering is very easy like the Corolla has electronic assist. Like I mentioned, the visibility is great. I can see past those mirrors on both sides instead of the mirrors being on the corner. So the visibility is wonderful on the Camry. The turning radius. Very good. Didn't even have to slow down that much for that. And I feel like the road noise, I mean, I know this to be true, but it's, it's funny because I'm just driving it around and I can already tell from a Corolla, the road noise is reduced. So the acoustics are definitely a lot better on this car than in the Corolla. But a Corolla is not a bad car to consider compared to a Camry, especially if you're saving the dollars. Sometimes you can, you know, you can see almost a seven to ten thousand dollar difference on this uh, Camry versus Corolla. Now, a couple things you might be wondering: all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive versus the front-wheel drive. So the all-wheel drive, you're going to feel the all-wheel drive because instead of you feeling that, and it this all depends on perception. I've daily driven a rear-wheel drive car before, a front-wheel drive, and an all-wheel drive, and now I daily drive a 4x4 that's back-wheel drive. So in a back-wheel drive car, as you can kind of feel the car pushing you, the seat's pushing you when you step on it. A front-wheel drive car, the car's kind of just pulling. On the all-wheel drive, it's just like a linear kind of thing. Sometimes with the all-wheel drive, they feel a little heavy at first, but that depends on the transmission. You don't really feel a ton of lag, and if you want to reduce that, you can pop it into sport mode, and it'll rev out and give you a little bit more power. But I would say the acceleration and stuff feels very similar. The front wheel drive from the get-go might feel just a dot peppier, which is kind of weird, but we all interpret that stuff differently. When you're hitting the turns in a front wheel drive SE versus an all-wheel drive SE, you might feel a little bit more confidence-inspiring handling on the all-wheel drive, which makes sense because you have those back wheels and front wheels driving the car through those turns. Do not shy away from a front wheel drive if you don't think you need the back wheels and you never get snow. But some people, they just love the idea of all-wheel drive you know, for that bad weather. So if you're living in an area with snow, definitely look at some all-wheel drives. Uh, handling during the turns, the firmer suspension is nice. I would say this compared to the LE. If you are a driver type and you put on a lot of miles or hours in the car and you have the money for the SE, 100% go for the SE. You're going to be super happy. And I'm sorry, LE drivers, you have great cars. Simplicity is nice. But if you can swing the extra money and you appreciate what it has to offer, the Camry SE is a wonderful, beautiful car to drive. That summarizes the review of the 2023 Toyota Camry SE all-wheel drive. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next video.
Peace.